When the daughter of Peter the Great, Elizabeth Petrovna, ascended the Russian throne, the people rejoiced and accepted the news with enthusiasm. But Tsarina inherited exuberant, wayward, and bossy father's temper, and also the desire everywhere and in everything to be the first to remain the main trendsetter, commanding to wear certain clothes and jewelry. I have already written about some amazing jewelry of the Queen Fashionista. Of course, this is only a small part of her amazing jewelry collection. There are some more beautiful pieces on the photo. I can't stop admiring the incredible luxury and brilliance of the Tsar's jewelry. Elizabeth Petrovna had time to manage state affairs and organize lavish social events, balls and parties, at which the sovereign mother loved to show off each time in a new outfit with artfully arranged hairstyles and sparkling creations of jewelers. The boundless passion of Peter's daughter for expensive jewelry had both its obvious advantages and certain disadvantages. On the one hand, for the state obvious benefit, in Russia began to actively develop haberdashery and jewelry production. On the other hand, the aristocrats at the court of Elizabeth Petrovna had a hard time. Many of the highest commands now dealt exclusively with the appearance of all women who could dare to compete with the Empress herself for the title of the first beauty and fashionista of Street Petersburg. Thus, the year 1751 was marked by a very strange imperial decree, which in fact infringed on the rights of ladies who were invited to the highest court. Aristocrats had to decorate hairstyles exclusively to half of the head. Namely, only the left side of it, and to wear on the said side one single precious tresila. The foreign word tresile was called in the 18th century elegant jewelry hairpins with hairpins on special springs. The jewelry moved and shook on the hair as if it came to life. From now on, only the empress could wear a hairstyle with two such hairpins. No one dared to violate the Tsar's command. In such cases, Elizabeth showed herself as a kind-hearted father and what her anger would result in, it was frightening to guess. Thus, the Hermitage presents a portrait by artist I. Vishnyakov. The painter depicted the court lady Stepanida Yakovleva with a head ornament in the form of a half tyra. It looks quite strange, as I think. Portrait of Lady Stepanida Yakovleva with a half tyra. God forbid that any brave woman should appear before the eyes of the emperor in the same outfit in which she had already been at the previous ball. Repression and punishment will follow without fail. What came up with a clever sovereign? She simply put ink stamps on the dresses of the entourage and invitees so that they could not wear the same outfit again. And if a desperate beauty wore a luxurious ball gown, even remotely resembling the color and style of Her Majesty's clothes, Peter's daughter publicly slapped the wretch for such insolence. Elizabeth looked carefully at the attire of her entourage during festivals and celebrations. If she did not like the hairstyle or lace detail on the sleeve, the ruler did not hesitate for a long time, came up and cut off a piece of hair, frills, or ruffles. Ladies who dared to wear the wrong jewelry, perhaps too beautiful or rivaling the royal, were afraid to lose their jewelry at the same second, the sovereign herself cut off diamonds and pearls, pendants, brooches and necklaces from the beautiful neck, from the neckline or hairstyle of the outrageous royal order. They will know how to compete with the empress herself in her main passion, jewelry luxury and crazy closet. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the Jewelry Stories channel and click on the bell not to miss new videos.